In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. peace be with you. Amen. Welcome to our celebration of the Feast of the Assumption of Our Blessed Lady. As you know, we probably would have been up at Osmotherly to, later on today for the uh, celebration of the Assumption, because that's the dedication of the Lady Chapel there, Our Lady of uh, Mother of Divine Grace, Our Lady Assumed into Heaven, and St. Nicholas. Anyway. We can't be there, but we can give honour and praise to the Lord for the gift of Mary, his mother, the true disciple. So as we begin to celebrate this Mass, let's call to mind our sins, asking for God's mercy and pardon. Lord, you pull down princes from their thrones and exalt the lowly. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You fill the hungry with good things. Christ, have mercy. You look with mercy on your people. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Gloria in excelsis Deo. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who assumed the Immaculate Virgin Mary, the mother of your Son, body and soul, into heavenly glory, grant, we pray, that always attentive to the things that are above, we may merit to be sharers of her glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God for ever and ever. A reading from the book of the Apocalypse. The sanctuary of God in heaven opened, and the Ark of the Covenant could be seen inside it. Now a great sign appeared in heaven, a woman, adorned with the sun, standing on the moon, and with the twelve stars on her head for a crown. She was pregnant and in labour, crying aloud in the pangs of childbirth. Then a second sign appeared in the sky, a huge red dragon, which had seven heads and ten horns, and each of the seven heads crowned with a coronet. Its tail dragged a third of the stars from the sky 
and dropped them to earth. And the dragon stopped in front of the woman as she was having the child, so that he could eat it as soon as it was born from its mother. The woman brought a male child into the world, the son who was to rule all the nations with an iron scepter. And the child was taken straight up to God, to his throne, while the woman escaped into the desert, where God had made a place of safety ready. Then I heard a voice shout from heaven, victory and power and empire forever have been won by our God and all authority for his Christ. The word of the Lord. reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of all who have fallen asleep. Death came through one man, and in the same way, the resurrection of the dead has come through one man. Just as all men die in Adam, so all men will be brought to life in Christ, but all of them in their proper order. Christ is the first fruits, and then, after the coming of Christ, those who belong to him. After that will come the end, when he hands over the kingdom to God the Father, having done away with every sovereignty, authority, and power. For he must be king until he has put all his enemies under his feet, and the last of the enemies to be destroyed is death, for everything is to be put under his feet. The word of the Lord.
from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Mary set out and went as quickly as she could to a town in the hill country of Judea. She went into Zechariah's house and greeted Elizabeth. Now as soon as Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leapt in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. She gave a loud cry and said, Of all women, you are the most blessed, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. Why should I be honoured with a visit from the mother of my Lord? From the moment your greeting reached my ears, the child in my womb leapt for joy. Yes, blessed is she who believed that the promise made her by the Lord would be fulfilled. And Mary said, My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord, and my spirit exults in God my Saviour, because he has looked upon his lowly handmaid. Yes, from this day forward, all generations will call me blessed, for the Almighty has done great things for me. Holy is his name, and his mercy reaches from age to age for those who fear him. He has shown the power of his arm. He has routed the proud of heart. He has pulled down princes from their thrones and exalted the lowly. The hungry he has filled with good things, the rich sent empty away. He has come to the help of Israel, his servant, mindful of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, of his mercy to Abraham and to his descendants forever. Mary stayed with Elizabeth for about, about three months and then went back home. The Gospel of the Lord. So today we celebrate once again the solemnity of the Assumption of our Blessed Lady into Heaven. In acknowledging Mary in this way, we look back to Jesus' victory celebration in the Resurrection and the Ascension, and we look forward to our own victory in Christ in bodily resurrection into Heaven. Just as Jesus and Mary were taken body and soul into Heaven, so we are promised that, like them, we will continue to live on eternally in the presence of God. What an incredible promise that is when you think about it. It's what is meant by Christ being the first fruits. He is our promise of eternal life because sin entered into us because of one man, Adam. And redemption and resurrection comes also through one man, Jesus. So Paul gives us this reminder in today's second reading in his letter to the Corinthians. But really the focus is very much on Mary and her faithfulness to Jesus as his mother. She is the first and best disciple of all. Thus we can look to her for a sure response to the presence of God in our world. Her cousin Elizabeth points this out with, of all women, you are the most blessed, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. Notice that the context of this greeting is the humble act of familial love shown by Mary, now pregnant with Jesus, going to visit Elizabeth, whose son leapt in her womb at Mary's greeting. This is an extraordinary response to what seems such a simple act on Mary's part. Mary's response to Elizabeth, quietly yet so strongly, acknowledges the incredible grace that encompasses the whole scene. Her son-to-be is the reason for the leaping with joy. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord, and my spirit exults in God my Saviour. Any and all of the graceful responses in this gospel story are due to God's love and God's forgiveness. And so, Mary, the first and best of Jesus' disciples, receives wholeheartedly the beauty and the goodness of God. So
So what does this magnificent yet so human scene say to us? Well, primarily that God visits us in the ordinariness of our lives. Here we see a family meeting of two gifted women and the encounter is suffused with the love of God. And secondly, that God stays with us in our human endeavours as the presence underneath which we move and live and have our being. And finally, those encounters with God occurring always in the midst of our daily life, in our daily lives, are the way that we are saved by God's tender mercy. Gracious God, we pray that we open ourselves to your life-giving presence as we go about our lives today. Be with us and lead us to see that, like Mary, we too are amazingly blessed in the ordinariness of our life. Help us to acknowledge, as she did, the source of that blessing, the greatness of the Lord. So let's stand now to profess our faith together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Blessed is she who trusted that the Lord's word to her would be fulfilled. Like Mary, let us now trust that he will hear our prayers. For the Church, that she, like the Virgin Mary, may bring Christ into the world with joy and be joined with him in endless life. Lord, in your mercy. For government leaders, that the assumption of Mary may awaken them to the supreme dignity of each human life. Lord, in your mercy. For all mothers, that they may find in Mary the example <coughs> and strength to carry out their vocation. Lord, in your mercy. For the lowly, the hungry, and the dispossessed, that the Almighty will do great things in their lives and in the lives of all who are deprived of human dignity. Lord, in your mercy. For our own parish community, that inspired by Mary's witness of faith and her holiness of life, we may always be positive signs of hope. Lord, in your mercy. For all who are sick or suffering in any way, that they may find strength, consolation, and healing by turning to Mary, who intercedes for us from her place in heaven. Lord, in your mercy. We pray to Our Lady to intercede for all our prayers. Hail Mary. Full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou, among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now. We pray in silence for our own intentions.
God our Father, by bringing Mary body and soul to heavenly glory, you give us new hope. May we never doubt that we hear that you will hear and answer our prayers. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this oblation, our tribute of homage, rise up to you, O Lord, 
And through the intercession of the most blessed Virgin Mary, whom you assumed into heaven, may our hearts aflame with the fire of love constantly long for you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right <clears throat> and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For today the Virgin Mother of God was assumed into heaven as the beginning and image of your church is coming to perfection and a sign of sure hope and comfort to your pilgrim people. Rightly you would not allow her to see the corruption of the tomb, since from her own body she marvelously brought forth your incarnate Son, the author of all life. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim. Sanctus, 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 Dominus, Deus You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, 
we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honour is yours forever and ever. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my heart. Only say the word, my son shall be the body of Christ, give you save to my life. Mary has been taken. 
especially those joining us from home, we make our spiritual communion prayer together. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the holy sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things, and I passionately desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my soul, so that I may unite myself wholly to you, now and forever. Amen.
Let us pray. Having received the sacrament of salvation, we ask you to grant, O Lord, that through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, whom you assumed into heaven, we may be brought to the glory of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. So this is the, the last Sunday that I'll be celebrating Mass with you for quite some time um, because I'm going to start travelling around the diocese again so I won't, be on the, I won't be the second curate at the cathedral anymore. I'll resume my task as, as bishop around the rest of the diocese. It's been a, a real pleasure being able to celebrate with you over these months and to be joining with those uh, online as well. Um, and I'm very grateful for all the prayers that people have offered when I, when I did the, uh, the pro had the problem with my leg. Very, very grateful for that. And um, so that's a sign that we're slowly but surely coming back to, to normal. So we continue to pray that the virus may be under control and that we will be able to regain our normal life again, giving glory and praise to Almighty God for our freedom, for our health, for our security. The Lord be with you. Bow down your heads to receive God's blessing. May God, who through the childbearing of the Blessed Virgin Mary, willed in his great kindness to redeem the human race, be pleased to enrich you with his blessing. Amen. May you know always and everywhere the protection of her through whom you have been found worthy to receive the author of life. Amen. May you, who have devoutly gathered on this day, Carry away with you the gifts of spiritual joys and heavenly rewards. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ.
Ladies and gentlemen, if you would please take your hymn sheets away with you.